Last year in Canada, 172,000 people were injured in car accidents. So far at our rehabilitation center, no one has ever been injured, which might seem like a little bit of a miracle. A lot of foam people have been killed. One of them was put down by... I killed somebody today. Stressed out Azim, who was nominated as Canada's worst driver by Ray, his buddy. It just looks like you broke their leg, man. No, no, I killed them. One person who's looked like she may get injured is self-absorbed Margarita, who was brought to rehab by Cheryl, her worried best friend. Oh my God, that f scared the hell out of me. It may seem like a fluke. Oh! That blind in his right eye. Oh. Kevin has never been hurt. He was brought to rehab by Lenny, his patient boyfriend. I would back up again, because I would get yourself more straightened out. <gasps> what did I hit? I don't know. All right. Inexperienced Diane doesn't drive at home because she's afraid of injuring someone. She was brought to rehab by Stefan. Her encouraging husband. Can you just try to relax? Our next Canada's Worst Driver candidate, Flora, drives like she's trying to get injured. Flora was made a candidate by Frank, her husband. Holy, what happened? And finally, we've got out of control Klein. This cocky teenager was brought to rehab by Maureen, his enabling mother. We give him a 10 for effort. Like a 10 for effort? Give me a break, man. The kids had 10 accidents in two years, right? Lives are at stake. Oh, Egos have certainly been hurt in our rehab center. Me. But as I said, all of our nominees have remained physically unscathed. Okay, I give up. That may seem like a miracle, but... Oh. Wanna know why no one has ever been injured at our rehabilitation center? It's not because we have the magical ability to make people's arms and legs regenerate. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's so much nicer. It's because we're dedicated to safety. We know exactly what kind of motorist we're dealing with, and the kind we're dealing with is Canada's worst driver. Here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center, we've got four experts on hand. High speed expert, Philippe Letourneau. Legal expert, Cam Woolley. Mental health therapist, Shamala Kiru. And our head instructor, Tim Danter, who today is teaching the art of trailer reversing. Come on around, let's uh, get in the truck. We're gonna learn how to back a trailer today. There really are only two things you need to know about reversing a trailer. First, when you steer in one direction, the trailer will head in the other direction. If we keep going this way, what's going to happen? It's going to jackknife. Nice. Right, and we don't want to do that, so now what we do is we turn the wheels the opposite way. Jackknifing is the second thing you need to know about. If you reverse in one direction for too long, the trailer's angle will become so severe it won't roll anymore. That is a jackknife. And at that point, it's a lost cause. For their challenge, Canada's worst drivers will be reversing a hot dog. That's attached to a hot dog vendor's trailer 
that's attached to a van that must be reversed. Out of this cage, around a corner, down a short straightaway to this picnic area. Klein will show you how it's done. Use your mirrors. Don't tell me what to do. What Klein does is come around the turn with no problem. You're good. Okay, don't, don't look back, don't look back. You make me nervous when you look back. And he continues down the straightaway with no problem. I think that's it. That is it. Klein's done in three minutes. Give me five. Yeah. Constantly stressed out Azim is up next. I'm starting to freak out. Don't freak out, man. When Azim starts freaking out, this is a uh, bad anxiety. His mind always goes blank. I'm just like forgetting everything that he told me now, oh. which sucks. What really sucks is that when Azim starts to have one of these meltdowns, man, I hate trailers. He always shuts down. Oh. That's not right. This isn't right either. Neither is this. Or this. This is getting worse and worse. Getting this uptight is why Azim's hair is literally falling out. I don't want to do this challenge anymore. I'm kind of done. I'm done. Margarita is getting as stressed out as Azim. Uh -huh. We're not trying to stress Canada's worst drivers out. I'm getting angry. We're trying to educate them. You, you stupid bitch. This challenge teaches steering. No. Nope. It teaches where to look. You can look out the back. You can look out the back window or at the mirrors, and either will show you that you're jackknifing. And it teaches the importance of patience. You don't even see it, do you? Yeah, I f see it. I just have no patience. Margarita does have enough patience to finish, and she learns some valuable lessons. I wasn't using my mirrors, and I was overthinking where to turn the wheel. Flora gets ordered through this challenge by her husband, Frank. Go. Go. Stop. Stop. Straight. Shoot. Shoot. Too much. No. Frank looks like he's going to explode. But it's normal she's going to make mistakes, but that's, that's what the rehab center is all about. But let her think on her own, you know? No, no, keep going left. Left more. A little bit right. Too much. Too much left. All the way right. Go. Stop. A little bit left. More left. More. Just go. Come on. Just go. Left. I'm at the end of life. Don't yell at me. OK. OK. OK, stop. Flora can't finish this challenge because Frank can't stop barking orders. So frustrating. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Diane's passenger doesn't bark orders at her. You see something in your mirror here? Yeah, I see it. Stefan. Oh, God. Let's his wife think for herself. Okay. No. Just relax. No, I'm you. Just relax. You're not even helping me. Thinking for herself. Oh, f me. I want to go this way. Diane learns how to reverse our trailer. You're right in the middle. You did it. Diane is a philosophical driver. When life gives you hot dogs, make hamburgers. <laughs> Kevin's father drove trailers on family vacations. But Kevin is not his father. Okay, let's try this again. Kevin creates jackknife. All right, let's try this again. After jackknife. And it's kind of a jackknife gang, isn't it? Yep. After jackknife. Son of a bitch. To make sure Kevin can see what he's doing as the sun sets, 
Bring in some trucks and turn on their headlights, will you please? We bring in some extra lighting. I don't know how the hell my dad does this? The Driver Rehabilitation Center, shining a light on bad motoring since 2005. Make it go right, otherwise it's kind of... That fence again. Give it a couple more tries and then that's it. Tell my family I miss them. All right, that's it. I, you're done? I'm done. I, I can't do this. So far in rehab, Kevin hasn't passed a single challenge. So I guess this is another fail, huh? When we come back, we'll see who the herkiest, jerkiest driver in rehab is by running everybody's favorite test, the water tank challenge. Oh my God! What's the difference between a PT Cruiser and an onion? Well, nobody cries when you cut up a PT Cruiser. <laughs> this year, we cut up our PT Cruiser to use in your favorite challenge. Oh, yes, indeedy. It's time to see who is the herkiest, jerkiest driver in rehab using an annual exam we call the Water Tank Test. You know how this works. Drivers will be behind the wheel of this PT Cruiser and underneath its cargo. Namely, 200 liters of water. If they drive smoothly, they'll stay dry. If they stop and start too quickly, they'll get soaked. This year's course is fairly simple. There's a precision steering section down there, a reverse section, and as usual, it starts with a straightaway where drivers must accelerate up to 50 kilometers an hour and then slow down and stop before reaching this sign. Water tank challenge. Ugh. On the 50k an hour straightaway, I accelerate smoothly. Oh yeah, I'm going fast already. 40? And that's 50. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Slow, 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 slow. Oh, stop in time. Oh yeah, no problem. Ooh. I made it through there perfectly. The precision steering section is next. The best way to do this course is find a nice, slow speed and never alter. I stay completely dry through the precision steering section, which is actually fairly wide. Now, it's the reverse section. This turnaround cage is where the reversing begins. Okay, this sets a personal record. I have never gotten through one of these courses without getting a little bit wet. Reversing smoothly through the slalom, I'm still bone dry. Ooh, I'm gonna go off the road. I don't wanna go off the road. So I'm gonna reposition with a little, ah! Bit of an S turn. See, see that? I forgot what I was doing. I got a little bit cocky, I got a little bit careless. I forgot about my cargo and I paid the price. Mm. It just goes to show you what happens when you let your mind wander when you're driving. <laughs> I've got 200 liters of water on the roof. I should focus on going smoothly. The reverse slalom channels me into the final parking spot where... I want to drive like Barry White. Smooth. I'm finished. And I only lost five liters of water. Margarita is up next. You gotta get to 50, dude. On her attempt to smoothly accelerate up to 50 kilometers an hour. Go, 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 you only got 40. Margarita reaches 50 a little too late. And it says stop, and it says stop, and it says stop, stop sign, there's a stop sign. Oh my God! Ah! <laughs> I don't love you no more. Oh my God. I hate you. I hate watching people run into things. 
just because they're flustered. When Margarita gets to the turnaround section... I'm soaked. She keeps soaking, Cheryl. <laughs> and on the slalom section... <laughs> she keeps soaking, Cheryl. Am I even in the course? Margarita is on course to being named Canada's worst driver. Ah! Oh my god! What the frick did you just hit? The <clears throat> concrete, for f sakes. I can't even see anything. If you can't see, stop driving! Diane accelerates towards 50k an hour suddenly. No, 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 I told you we can't do it slowly. Yeah, you had 40, I go, increase, increase, you have to stop soon. Increase 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, you're at 50. Break! This is awesome. I got it over with. Diane gets our herky-jerky driving test over with. By driving completely carelessly. Oh, I'm gonna hit it. If you say you're going to hit something and then you hit it, it's not an accident. It's a premeditated assault. Yeah. Rehab's best student is drowning today. Everything is just wet, 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 wet. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers navigate their way through oh, this specially designed course. Who designed this, Andrew? Show him. Canada's worst drivers are showing us how smooth they are on the pedals. Oh, God. Am I even in the course? And Kevin is up next. On the 50k an hour straightaway, Kevin gets up to speed without dropping any water. 50. Hey, smooth stop, smooth stop, smooth stop! Ah! Oh! 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 Holy smooth. I know. Oh, holy f Every time a driver breaks the law, they don't always get a ticket. But when you break the laws of physics, <laughs> you get punished right away. On the precision steering section, ah. Kevin is not precise. Watch your mirrors. Oh. I'm trying. And he isn't paying attention to his blind side. You're not watching the front. This? No! What? 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 You, you're not watching what you're doing. Being blind in your right eye oh. is not an excuse for hitting everything on your right side. Here, here, here. Oh. Oh. Son of a bitch. When Kevin gets turned around... I'm trying, you know. He reverses like he's completely blind. Oh. Uh. There's no reason to try and cut that sharp. You've got this much road. You could stage a musical over here, for God's sake. And that musical could be called... River Dance! That's way too much. Me. Speed lover Klein is up next. You don't want to speed. As usual, instead of just hitting our target speed, Klein goes faster, and the results are predictable. Really? 
Hey, I slow down somewhat. He should slow down some more. Watch that. We're good, we're good. Because in the precise steering section, the boy ain't precise. Client is fine through the reverse slalom and fine in the final parking spot. Klein can drive well when he wants to. I know how to brake very smoothly, hence I'm not totally soaking, but I did get wet. Stressed out Azim is up next. Azim smoothly accelerates, but when he tries to slow down, he isn't smooth at all. And he comes around the corner without stopping. Can you see anything? I can't see. <laughs> oh, is he? In the reverse slalom, he steers repeatedly off the course. Where are you going, Azim? I don't remember this challenge being, hey, can you guys go off the track and do this? Azim, why am I getting wet? Ray's getting wet because getting back on track is pretty bumpy. Azim needs to get less stressed. Unfortunately, as I continue to get wet, I continue to beat myself up. When Flora gets on the 50k an hour straightaway, Flora loses more water than anyone. And she didn't even go fast enough. Flora. Flora. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go 50. That means she has to go back and try again. Oh my. Hey! <laughs> Before her second attempt, Frank gives his usual encouragement. I'm totally pissed off. I'm driving, okay? Ready? <laughs> Keep calm. Some marriages have dissolved during this challenge. Let's hope theirs doesn't. Will Flora manage to accelerate and decelerate smoothly this time? No. Oh my! Smoothly? <laughs> As usual. That way. Frank is now trying to control Flora's driving. Into there, into there. Stop, stop, you don't talk, okay? Did she just sound to be quiet? Nice. Flora can ask Frank to not talk, but... More, please, okay. Frank just talks more. All the way back, all the way left, hurry. Flora won't start getting better until she's able to think for herself. Is she getting better? Uh, not yet. Oh, so uh. negative. When we come back, Canada's worst drivers learn how to swerve around an object that suddenly appears. Just because people or things are on the side of the road where they belong doesn't mean they'll stay there. Let's imagine an idiot lets his dog run out onto the middle of the street and then chases after it. You don't get to run into him. Let's imagine a bicyclist gets in your way. You can't smack into him either. Let's imagine a taxi cab puts himself in a T-bone situation. You can't T-bone him. The next challenge for Canada's course drivers is learning how to swerve and avoid around an unexpected object. Because sometimes you really should swerve and avoid. Philippe Letourneau will now teach Canada's worst drivers how to avoid an obstacle that appears suddenly in front of them while they're traveling 50K an hour. 
you're driving along, boot, 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 and all of a sudden, whoa, there's a car that gets in front of you. You have to swerve, avoid the car, and then come to a stop once the car is stabilized. The key to avoiding a suddenly appearing object is not hitting the brakes while swerving. Only when the car is stabilized can you hit the brakes. So once again, the sudden procedure goes like this. I gotta swerve. If we need to swerve, we have to swerve, stabilize, and then get on the brake. Okay. That's scary. When Canada's worst drivers try the sudden maneuver, three common problems occur. First of all, people just aren't steering enough. Don't be shy. Whoa, whoa. Okay. The second problem is... Come so? No. Wrong. <laughs> totally wrong. I, I didn't look where I wanted to go. People are looking at the obstacles instead of looking where they want to go. So again, look where you want to go. Never look at the cones you're trying to avoid. And the third common problem is drivers hitting the brakes while swerving. Left. So you saw also that you got on the brake and the car yeah. got really, really squirrely, eh? Okay, so you remember, first we need to avoid. Okay. Stabilize and then brake. Right. Eventually. Okay. <laughs> nice. All of Canada's worst drivers. Nice. Learn how to avoid an obstacle. Nice. Woo. That appears suddenly in front of them. Good? Good. <laughs> Very good, huh? Yeah. Habitual speeder Klein. Here we go. Let's add 20K. Gets an extra lesson about the reason we have speed limits. Klein often drives 20 kilometers an hour over the speed limit, but. And left. An extra 20 kilometers an hour made Klein lose total control. A lot of people think just adding 20 kilometers per hour is not much. But we saw in an emergency situation, it could potentially get you in a dangerous situation. Does that make sense? It does. Our once pristine Mustang has been in a lot of dangerous situations. On our Sudden Swerve Challenge course, folks will drive it straight towards our cityscape. At the last possible moment, a group of pedestrians will randomly appear on one side or the other. There won't be enough time to stop, so drivers will have to swerve to the safe side. It's a piece of cake. Watch this, here I go. 70 kilometers an hour, 50, 60, 70. That's 70 right there, wow. Wait for something to pop out, where is it gonna be? Oh, there it is. Like I said, piece of cake. Habitual speeder Klein learned a lot in his swerve and avoid lesson. When I stopped and was going faster, not only did I clip a car, but I my stopping distance increased fastly. That's the lesson, sir. 70 kilometers an hour, swerve to the open space. Ready? When Klein goes, he never even glances at his speedometer, and he accelerates past 70 up to 90. It's too fast. It sure is. Whoa. You're going slightly over the speed limit. Why were you going too fast? I wasn't paying attention to my speed. We warned Klein that speeding causes fatal crashes. And he's still speeding. Whoa. Wow, wow. Does that prove a point? It does. Six people a day die on Canadian roads. Die. It's not a joke, it's not a little piece of fluff, right? It's an educational program and get it through your thick skull that you should drive the speed limit. Carnage, man. Get in here and do it at 70. So what's it going to take? Are we having an effect on you? 
Most definitely. If this kid drives the speed limit, he's fine. This time, Klein checks his speed, he stays at 70, and he easily swerves when the jaywalkers pop out. Whoa. I'm sorry if this sounds harsh, but people who habitually speed are stupid idiots. Let this day change your life. Let me wobble this in your face, you stupid idiot. Go the speed limit. Okay. Wow, the truth hurts, but it can really help. So, what's up, Maureen? And I don't like what you say, <laughs> but it's right. And you know what? I'm probably just as bad in a weird way, too. I go over the speed limit, and I've probably learned just as much as he has here, and I'm just so thankful to have the opportunity. <laughs> All right? Big day for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good man. Thank you. When we come back... Oh! The rest of Canada's worst drivers run through our Swerve and Avoid Challenge. worst drivers have learned how to swerve around an object that appears suddenly in front of them. So you're gonna pass your challenge? Yes, I'm gonna pass my challenge. Now they're showing us what they learned on our Swerve and Avoid Challenge course. And Margarita is up next. Go, 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 faster, faster, faster. You are at 70, 70, 70, 70, you're at 80, 70, 70. Good job! <gasps> okay, that's not bad. That wasn't bad. That was terrible. So, she'll have to try again. Place your bets. Go, 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 go. Keep going, you're only at 60. Okay, you're at 70. Stay, 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 stay. Good job. Stay, stay, stay. Awesome. Wicked. That was perfect. Margarita finally passes a high speed challenge. She's built for speed and comfort. <laughs> Flora knows she needs to concentrate on this challenge. You don't talk, okay? I don't want to talk. No, no. With no talking, Flora goes exactly 70k an hour. And when the dog walker appears, Flora swerves successfully. Yeah! Flora passed. That should put a spring in her step. Yay! <laughs> I made it. Diane! Learn the key to a sudden swerve is to not touch the brake. Before this, would you have hit the brake? Yes, I would have. Hitting the brake is instinctual. And when Diane sees the taxi pop out, she hits the brake and hits the building. On her second attempt, Diane stares straight ahead and speeds up to over 80. She's going too fast. Way too fast. Just pause. On this challenge, the obstacles that need to be avoided are pulled into place by human beings. But Diane's going so fast, our staff aren't able to pull the obstacles into position in time. As a result, Diane has two open lanes in front of her, but instead of turning into one, Diane drives straight through the cityscape. I was waiting for the car. Safe drivers always have a plan B. I'm still waiting for the for the taxi. I'm saying, what the hell's happening? <laughs> like, I mean, I thought I just. I don't know what the f that was. Th I had no plan B. 
Azim is up next. Okay, I'm at 70. Azim isn't stressed today. And when the pedestrians pop out, Azim succeeds. Did I just do that? Azim just did do that. I just did the evasive maneuvering challenge and I passed. Kevin will be the final driver to saddle up our Mustang. This thing ain't no pony car, Andrew. It's a dead, flogged horse. Mm, been working on that line, Kevin? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn from Philippe today? Look where you want to go. Mm hmm Kevin gets going, but instead of looking where he wants to go, Kevin looks at the object he needs to avoid and steers straight at it. Oh! Oh! What happened was, when the car came out, that's all I stared at. So you saw the car come out and then you turned into it? Yes, because because that's all I focused on. Police, fire, ambulance, parked emergency vehicles get hit hundreds of times a year in Canada because people are staring at them instead of where they should be going. Look where you want to go. I'm getting that done as a neck tattoo. 40. When Kevin goes this time, he hits the correct speed. You're at 70. But that's not all he hits. Kevin is a long way from being rehabilitated. <sighs> when we come back... It's blowing up in my face. The experts and I will decide who this episode's graduate should be. Unless no one graduates. This episode, Canada's worst drivers have learned how to deal with a trailer. Man, I hate trailers. We've tested how smooth their driving is. <laughs> Maybe just a bit smoother next time. And they've been taught how to swerve around an object that suddenly appears. Oh! Oh! In past seasons, the nominees have been eager to graduate. This year, though... I don't want to graduate yet until I feel comfortable with myself. The bad drivers all want to stick around. If you could control your own fate, you'd come back next episode? Yeah. I'm getting better, but I still need to, to learn more. I'm not ready to graduate. I need much more experience. I do not want to graduate this episode, nor do I deserve to. Klein's mother worries that if he graduates, she might return to her enabling ways. My fear is that if we don't help him out with the tickets and stuff, he'll drive without a license. And Maureen, that's the thing with enablers, is typically we think we're helping out. Um, but when you're enabling, you're over-functioning. Right? And so when you overfunction by paying insurance, by paying for vehicles, by paying for tickets, you invite your son then to underfunction. Right? And he's 18, but he's not a baby anymore. And yeah. he needs to step up. Maureen, in my 30 years as a police officer, I met a lot of parents like you after a fatal collision. I found those parents were loving parents. And to show their love, they gave their kid maybe too much and sometimes loved them literally to death by giving them these opportunities. Maureen vows that she won't be one of those parents. I'm not gonna pay any more bills. I'm not gonna pay any more tickets. I'm gonna actually ask questions about things. Klein's mother will stand by. Okay. While we talk to her son about why he let his mother bring him to rehab. You told me when you got here that your motivation for showing up was to prove to her that you were great as a driver. Yes. And how's that working out for you? It's blowing up in my face. Klein says that rehab is transforming him, but his mother just hasn't noticed. 
She doesn't really see that I've changed all that much. Um, Maureen, do you see that he's changed? Little bits, little bits, little snippets. It, it depends. It scares me because I would like to see more. As a family, has this been a good process or a bad process, either of you? Good process, I think. It's definitely opened my eyes. I really do think that, um, you know, good has been done here. And more. And more, yeah. It's time for the experts and I to choose this episode's graduate. Um, I guess we just start with Klein. Is it, is it time for him to go? I think so. If you look at the challenges, he passed actually all the challenge, I guess. That's true. Once Klein got his speed under control, he passed the swerve and avoid challenge. Whoa. Klein finished the trailer challenge faster than anyone. Good job. And on our smooth driving challenge, Klein was easily the best. I got to uh, agree with that. Uh, Klein has come a huge way. His mom has come a huge way. I think it's time to send them home. Yeah, I don't think it's about driving skills with Klein. I think now it's about choices in how he uses the skills that he has. It's about growing up, and I think he grew up here. We haven't heard from Shamily yet, but Klein has already received more than enough votes to be this episode's graduate. Shamily? Unless no one graduates. In past seasons, we have had episodes in which no one graduated. So, we debate the merits of keeping Klein right here. Today's graduation deliberation was a really interesting one. Klein, you were the only person on the short list. So the debate actually was, should you graduate? Well, the experts believe that you and your mother have both had the wake-up call you need. The next step of your education has to come from within. So, I'm gonna give you back your driver's license. And I'm gonna say, you know how to drive correctly. Now I just hope you do it. Oh, you're gonna hug? Oh no! Yeah. Before rehab, no! No, Klein! Klein! Klein's head was frankly up his butt. But don't take my word for it. Klein's head is up his butt. He doesn't pay attention to the rules. He figures the rules are for other people. And he figured that paying for his rule breaking was his parents' responsibility. Who pays for all of your mishaps? We do. In rehab, we taught Klein that he wasn't as good a driver as he thought he was. Uh, I'm a bit surprised that I didn't do very well, but I don't know, not much to say. And Klein's mother learned that laughing about his bad driving hasn't been helping the boy. <laughs> That's what we mean when we say you might be an enabler. Okay. You're helping him be a bad driver sometimes. Love you. Love you too. I am ecstatic that we came here. The most emotional, toughest week of my life in a long time. But uh, you know what? I think it's all worth it. Woo! It has been worth it. Because Klein is now a... Much, much safer driver. Congratulations, guys. Well done, Klein, buddy. Be safe out there, man. There goes Klein. If you think your teenager might be Canada's worst driver, have a talk with him or her before they wind up on our show, or even worse. on the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. <laughs> the bad motorists learn to parallel park an ice cream truck. God, I've never encountered anything like this before. We see which of them can most easily get gas. Take it, take it, baby. 
And we teach everyone how to do a snazzy spin-around maneuver called the reverse flick. The city's over there and you're in a cornfield. Yeah, crazy.